All right, good Wednesday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets and earnings with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, let's begin with Boeing. Quite a big backlog for yeah, the company. Yeah, Boeing, the key thing about uh, Boeing is backlog. Uh, the more planes they make, obviously, the more money they make. But I think it's this is a secular growth area. One of the things I'm going to be talking about at our teaching on uh, Saturday are, are where are the great secular growth stories? And aerospace is probably the number one, and that has to do with great middle classification around the world and how flush most of the airline companies are. So Boeing once again delivers. Now, do I want to own Boeing here? Um, I switched from Boeing. I said, look, Boeing's great. We then started recommending Rockwell Collins. Rockwell Collins then gets a bit from United Technologies. But I will point this out about Boeing. It's still not expensive. Hmm. E even with the 70% gain this year? Yeah, it's still wow. not expensive. All right, Jim, let's move on to Coca-Cola. They're trying to become more than just a carbonated beverage Yeah, I company. mean, look, they're doing tea and they're doing mineral water and uh, they're doing a lot of things right. Uh, we own uh, PepsiCo for AxelorsPlus.com and Andrew Nui has a better model and this is uh, James Quincy, a, a new CEO uh, uh, at Coca-Cola. The Good income, a lot of buyback, but if you want growth and income uh, and consistency, you're still going to have to go to Andrew Nui because she's the best at PepsiCo. Mm. All right, meanwhile, Chipotle missing, obviously. I mean, is there any reason to own this stock when you have McDonald's doing so well? Uh, I have a piece this morning about how, I mean, Chipotle, they've lost their way. They had another instance, you know, the stock had gone back up because the American public has about an 18 month memory for what went wrong. Uh, and you had the December 7, 2015 nor norovirus up in Boston, and then you an annualize, you got 18 months and the stock had really come back a lot. And then you had the big social media issue, and I think the company is struggling, and the conference calls are always the same now, which is, listen, we're fixing things, we're fixing things, we're fixing things, and you know, when you have a high multiple stock, I don't want to hear that we're fixing things, I want to hear that things are great. Um, McDonald's a higher, you know, McDonald's does have a higher multiple now that it's had a long time, but McDonald's is taking, uh, Steve Easterbrook has got a laboratory around the world. And what he's done is really kind of amazing. What he says is, okay, this is working in Poland. Let's move it to France. This is working in France. Let's move it to England. Uh, he's got, at the beginning of his, the exposition of his call, he's got all these new dishes. And then he talks a lot about technology. Um, he talks a lot about franchise. He's feeling good about things. Uh, and that's a conference call that's an orchestrated call that really is quite, quite good. Yeah, McDonald's did so well globally, uh, as did Visa with Visa Europe. Yeah, now Visa is a story of double-digit gains, which is incredible because it's like Anthem. I mean, you see these companies, they're gigantic, mm. and they're putting up these numbers that are so good. And uh, Visa, Al Kelly has taken what Charlie Scharf gave him mm. in Visa and made it even better. And now, Charlie Scharf did have the wisdom of buying uh, Europe and Visa's doing quite well in Europe. It's uh, The cross-border numbers are great. MasterCard will be great. You know, I like PayPal and I like Square. And credit to Jack Dorsey, he's done a great job at Square. And while we're talking financials, we should note the 10-year highest yield since March. Right, and uh, look, the economy's better. Um, it, it's okay. One of the things that I think that we, uh, we've all become conditioned to believe is, is that if things get better, we're in trouble. Um, if things get better, you see what happens with 3M. Mm. Things get better, you see what happens with Honeywell. You see what's happened with uh, a, a lot of the big industrials, which is that they do quite well. Caterpillar, it's their time. There's nothing wrong with that. It's their time. Uh, meanwhile, AT&T, sort of, we knew they were going to have this subscriber loss, but obviously they have a great dividend. Is it a mistake to sell right now? Yeah, I think it is. I think AT&T, in a lot of ways, is... Uh, uh, at 5.7% yield, the, the acquisition of Time Warner helps the cash flow. And I think that there's a belief that all that matters is that they're losing certain subscribers. What matters is that the dividend is covered, well covered. Um, they do have a growth strategy. It's going to take some time. But I always look at Verizon ATT, Verizon ATT, and when you get one that has a, uh, a big difference and you've got the yield to be very sizable and the cash flow's there, uh, then I'm going to say don't sell it. Now, obviously ATT is very out of favor and the chart is terrible. And we have a lot of chartists out there. Uh, and that's fine. I, I, did, I did off the charts list. I have a Carly Garner who's going to be joining us on Saturday on a panel. And she's a fantastic chartist. But just understand that I like yield. I like income. Uh, I can't own stocks. ATT would be a stock. If I could buy that at 33, 34, put it away, I would do it. Huh, there you go. 
All right, meanwhile, advanced micro devices, is that sell-off justified in your view? Yeah, I, I, advanced micro is very problematic because this should have been a breakout quarter. Instead, it was a breakdown quarter. It should have been a quarter where the data center was great and they were making a lot of money and average selling prices for their chips were up, no. Uh, it should have been a quarter where we were hoping cryptocurrency, because of all these new cryptocurrencies, they would be exciting, no. Uh, uh, the CEO took a lot of the pizzazz out of the story, mm. and immediately reflected negatively on NVIDIA, which we own at Action Alerts. And I think that you have to recognize that uh, AMD is a second rate NVIDIA. AMD is a second rate Intel, it, that's unchanged. The only thing that's really changed is that second rates moved up to be much closer than first rate. But uh, I can't count as buying AMD after what I thought was a quarter, quarterly conference call where they really threw water on a lot of the great expectations that you have for AMD. And Eric Johnson from The Street has a great article yes. up on AMD right now. Uh, meanwhile, Jim, you talked about Norfolk Southern on CNBC saying how it's a good bellwether for commerce. Well, we don't want Norfolk Southern I'm using Norfolk Southern as basically a, an example of, a, the, of what I saw in American Express. American Express reports a quarter, people say, Hell, yeah, no kidding, that's why it ran, it sells down, and then people start buying. I'm hoping that Norfolk Southern is the same pattern. That's a, a confirmation pattern. The stock moved up, turned out the numbers were good, profit taking, and buyers come back. That's why I, I mentioned that as a good example. Mm -hmm. All right, Jim, we'll take one pause from earnings for a moment and talk about that new Amazon delivery service. They want to come into people's homes. What did well, you I think? Mean, look, I think that Amazon is a very wise company, and what they recognize is that some people want a feature. One of the things that I think that Amazon Prime does, it's not one size fits all. They'll say, look, there's a, people who have had things stolen. There are people who... Um, don't like to have boxes out there. Uh, maybe it's a prelude to being able to do something where they can put it in your refrigerator. Uh, remember that we're going to get a definition of what they're going to do with Whole Foods. It's very interesting because like Walgreens is up today mm. and I, you may be tempted to buy Walgreens and then you have to deal with the Amazon backlash. Mm. We have a bunch of really big quarters coming up. So I want you to stay focused on recognizing that Amazon is a moving target. And when they come up with something, People, there are always going to be people who like it because they do uh, artificial intelligence on their decisions. And none of their decisions are made by the idea of like, wow, you know what, that's a good idea. A lot of their decisions are based on the idea that, uh, that their artificial intelligence dictates this is what people want. And then it's affirmed by empirical evidence. Mm. All right, and we'll hear more from Amazon tomorrow in their earnings, but we also have Alphabet, which is an Action Alerts Plus holding. Right, now, Ruth Parr, the excellent CFO, I think will tell a good story. I think that I want them to tell a better story. I wish they talked more about how well Waymo's doing, or, or, or drones, how the drones are doing. Or, but everyone really just focuses on tack and search. And, uh, and, and so what happens is, is it becomes a story that people uh, either hate or love instead of being consistent, which is what I want. Um, we own it, we've owned it for a long time, and we continue to own it. So does Ruth Porat need to have more fun like Reed Hastings did on the Netflix well, call? Well, you know, Reed, I think she would regard Reed as being not rigorous enough, although then again, Netflix does have remarkable artificial intelligence yeah. too. Uh, Netflix, Amazon, and Spotify right. have the best artificial intelligence knowledge of their customer base. All right, and then another Action Alerts Plus name reporting earnings, Comcast. Anything, we talked about AT&T earlier. I think that Comcast, uh, I have low expectations because during the quarter, uh, they gave you some uh, downbeat information that was interpreted as being that uh, businesses stopped growing. I don't think that's the case. I think the business is good. Uh, we own it. It's not problematic. The only real problematic position we have right now are uh, Apache and Allergan. Uh, we're doing a very long takeout on Allergan to explain why we haven't jettisoned it. Uh, Allergan and Apache are two that have been severe disappointments, uh, but uh, Comcast is not one of them. All right, we'll stand by for your bulletins. Jim, that's it for us. A lot Thank of information. You. Thank you Thank so you. much. For more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio, head to actionalertsplus.com.